In 2014, I was sitting in a stuffy black suit with a string tie on because I thought that was hip and kind of cool, right? At a black tie event at some nondescript hotel in the confluence of four highways in the middle of the UK for the MPA Awards. So the MPA is the Master Photographer Awards. And the reason I was sitting there in this kind of that ballroom, you know, that's done up in the way that, you know, so often these end of year kind of slash pseudo award things are done, you know, a couple of uplighters and maybe some, you know, scaffolding with, you know, some, some bits on at the front and then a, a DJ at the back with a, you know, bow tie and stuff. And I'd been invited along because I had a finalist image in there in the Olympus Open category. And this had all come about because 20 years earlier, I had been sitting in a lecture room at Pretoria Technicon Photo School, probably on a Friday afternoon, because I think that's when we used to have our critique sessions. And I put up my first portrait, the first portrait I'd shot, you know, specifically to be judged or marked. <laughs> it's probably is better, better sort of thing. And I was immensely proud of this. It was like, oh, this is so good, so good. And, uh, and the first thing out of everybody's mouth was, um, Alex, you, Hello, you've focused on his watch. So I photographed a friend of mine called Ian, who'd been from uh, you know, high school with me. And I got him to pose like this, because you know, that's, that's how real poses are. <laughs> it's like your hand. And he was wearing a watch as well. So that's like you know, two rookie mistakes in one. And I'd photographed, I, I'd, I'd you know, focused on his watch. So it planted in my head a seed that technical things were what people would jump on, right? That, you know, I'm focused on the wrong thing. I should have focused on his eyes. And throughout the whole of my student career, I kind of worked on the technical aspects of things. Despite the fact that I wanted to be a portrait photographer, um, I, was, I was terrible with people. Like I really couldn't talk to them. So hence, I kind of photographed my classmates and maybe a few people who I kind of knew outside of class, but I never photographed anybody I didn't really know. And it was all really kind of like, sit there, do this, do that. Are the eyes in focus? Yes, they are. We're all good. Right? <laughs> so they, yeah, and if you look at these portraits, they're kind of, they're okay, but they don't have anything to them, right? There's no character really. So in true technical sense, they're not really portraits. They're more just kind of pictures of classmates. And then I kind of just, you know, drifted off from a little bit. I went in to do weddings and, and things like that. And then I did kind of left portraiture to one side. But over time, I had learned to be a little bit more comfortable, you know, talking to strangers, especially. Uh, like, I'm, well, you, you're not a stranger. You come here all the time, <laughs> you know. And, but I, I got used to talking and, and making a little bit of conversation. And when I moved back into the studio, I had a desire to do portraits like a lady called Lisa Fisser, along with kind of Sue Bryce and stuff. Uh, and Lisa Fisser was actually a finalist along with me at the, uh, at the MPA Awards. And she used to do, or she still does, I think, uh, these, these portraits of, of kids in what in the UK is called a fine art style. So that basically means, uh, you know, a black and white picture of, of a child looking po-faced. <laughs> right? That was kind of, you know, that's the, I don't know if in America they have like a similar kind of thing, but you know, let me know in the comments. Anyway, so it's kind of morphed into more sort of renaissance sort of looking sort of stuff nowadays. So that's kind of what I wanted to do. And I was looking at, you know, replicating it. Now from, from a technical point of view, it took me a couple of goes to get used to, you know, to, to lighting it a bit better, to finding my feet in this kind of lighting sort of style. But the images didn't really, they weren't landing still. And so I did some test shoots with people and I got to talking and, and there was a throwaway comment that I'd had from somebody, a, a friend of my, uh, my, my parents. Now I'd photographed his wife as a, for, you know, for like a portrait. And he said to me, he says, you know, you, Alex, there's something that happens when you are photographing. You are in a position where you can talk to, and he said, you know, he said his wife's name. And he said, and, um, and he said, you are able to talk to her in a way that if you had been an estate agent, I would have punched the lights out. I said, well, that's very weird. <laughs> and he said, yes, there's something about it that, 
you are, when you're in this situation photographing something, it becomes a very intimate event and people seem to open up to you and show you a side of themselves that is hidden, for want of a better word. I thought, okay, well, there's this thing. So maybe I should channel into that. So I did some test shoots and I got some, some, you know, some younger kids in because I thought, well, I want to do your know, copy, the Lisa Fisher thing. So I kind of sat there and said, well, are they going to have something? So what's missing here? And I went, okay, you know what's missing is the story, some sort of connection. I'd spent a lot of time looking at portraits at the National Portrait Gallery and, you know, and, and there's always something about them. There's a bit of character that was lacking in mine and a lot of other imitators of, of uh, Lisa Fisser. I so how are we going to tease this out? And the first thing was to make sure that people are relaxed. All right. So I always made a point, you know, having a chat with, with the, the guys. And if it was a youngster that, you know, the parents were there and stuff like that, I would, you know, obviously talk to the mum and dad, but then, you know, spend my time talking to the person. So, you know, ask him what sort of things that they liked and you get the conversation going. You start off, you start off light and you start off airy, easy things, you know, to talk about where's your favorite place to go on holiday. You know, who's your best friend at school? You know, you're looking forward to holidays. When's your birthday? You know, oh, I have a friend who's born on the same day. That, that kind of small talk. So it gets them relaxed gets them into the groove, right? It gives you also a chance to warm up because I think, I think of portrait photography a lot like a sport that, you know, you and the sitter, you need to warm up, right? Now, you know, obviously when you're photographing commercially and also so you don't have these kind of luxuries, but we're talking about, you know, people where you have some time to create portraits, you know, for, for, you know, for your own sort of enjoyment as, as it were. And, you want to go through this process of seeing how they react to things, of picking up on cues. Do they talk about certain things? Do they mention things? I remember photographing a young lady once who we'd been talking, and I photographed her a few times actually. So, so her, her mum was a little bit more kind of, oh, yeah, how are you, know, how are you doing and stuff. And, um, and she mentioned that this particular young lady had been subject to, to bullying at school and they, would, they had changed schools. And, uh, and I thought, well, that's, you know, it's a terrible thing. And, and I thought, well, I'm not going to ask her how she, you know, the, 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 the upset and, and obviously the, the you know, the, the, the mental, the, you know, struggles because of the bullying. Because the bullying is a terrible, terrible thing. And because we don't want kids to go to those places, right? We want kids to give us some story and stuff. And so I said, well, look, you know, let's channel, let's find this, let's take some of this. How do you feel now that you've moved school, right? And that you are no longer kind of having to deal with all these idiots and stuff like that. She went, no, I feel, I feel good about it. All right. So, so if, you know, in 20 years time, if, when you, if you saw these people again, right, how would you kind of, you would be like, you know, you tried to break me, but. You didn't. I'm like this. And it's, it's like a little game. I think, you know, if, if you watch kind of Peter Hurley, uh, he's a, uh, a relatively famous headshot photographer. And I remember watching a video of his where he talks about, you know, putting people into a scenario where they, you know, they, they, have, a, they have a game to, to, to play out. That's something else you can do, especially with older people. You know, so I think there's the, the one thing that sticks to me, you know, talking about actors saying, well, you just won an Oscar. How do you feel? Right. So over the time, I managed to build this up. And this brings us neatly onto to Karen. So by this point, you know, Karen comes into the studio and initially just to do some photographs of how, you know, this is a headshot, actually. You know, she came for a headshot uh, session. And I'd said, you know, bring a couple of changes of clothing. And, and, you know, and we can do some relaxed ones. We can do something sort of more sort of dramatic and, and stuff like that. So we started off. Nice one. I said, so what sort of feel do you like? You know, what, what sort of things? She goes, I, I go to Greece a lot. You know, I love living in Greece. That, hence, you know, why I've got all the kind of the, the very casual, very, you know, outfits. I'm so, okay, well, so we do lightish, airyish. Okay. And, um, you yeah, know, so these photographs and she's doing all sorts of stuff. And as we're talking, so, you know, why do you, why do you, you know, why Greece? 
and uh, it's just like, um, oh, well, you know, um, my second husband, you know, he, he, um, he spent a lot of time there and, and stuff like this. I really liked the place. And she go, oh, you know, that's kind of cool. And then, you know, we got talking and, and found out, you know, she works in a, you know, a museum. I think she was a, a, a consultant for museums. Or something. So yeah, you know, that's that's pretty cool, interesting job, you know, and stuff like. And and we got talking through all this, and she mentioned something about struggle in her life. And I said, oh, okay, that's interesting. And and this is where this idea of this kind of weird space, where if you play your cards right, if you are calm enough. I think this is important to say you need to be you need to it needs to be calm space, which is why knowing how to take photographs without fussing and being crazy, you know, sort of thing is so important that she volunteered. That's the thing. So we got we got talking through it and I kind of, I sort of look, what I want you to do, we're going to take some of that, right? Because I said, that must have been very hard. And she said, no, it was, it was a terrible thing for me. I didn't, didn't like it. I said, well, what I'd like you to do is, is, is to channel that, much like I mentioned with the, the girl earlier, and, and make it feel, you know, if you have just walked into a ballroom, right, some sort of gala event, and you are just like the hottest of hot things in that room. You are like, everybody's kind of like, wow, this is Karen. She's like a, a you're not, not like a diva kind of thing, but somebody who has overcome real struggle, genuine struggle in their life, right? And I want you to channel this through, right? I want you to just stand like this, nice and tall. And this is where you, you start talking quite, quite quietly. Weird. It's a wonderful thing when this 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 vibe descends into the the studio. It's 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 great. I love it, right? And I said, okay, we'll stand there and just you know. So I'm making sure that her pose is is more or less right. Nothing too difficult, okay? Because I want her to focus on the story. So she sits there and she comes up, and I said. Just a little bit, a little bit that, doing all this kind of super icy kind of stuff. And there's a moment that just the right expression pop, flicks over her face, right? The frames prior and after, it's a totally different photograph. And that is where, you know, you talk about like Henry Carter Bristol, he talks about the decisive moment and, and all this kind of thing. People think it just only applies to street photography, but they're wrong. They're wrong because the decisive moment in portraiture is so powerful because it is so fleeting. It's just, it's there and then it's gone. And you get a feel for it. You get a feel for when this, it's coming, it's coming, you can feel it coming, you, you feel it, it's there, it's there, it's there, it's there, it's there, it's there, and then it's gone, right? And the mistake I think a lot of photographers make is to keep machine gunning their way through it, snap, 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 they come on, that whole Austin Powers vibe, yes baby, yes baby, yes baby, if you're looking for an up-tempo shoot that's all about vibe and energy, that's fine, if you're looking for character, if you're looking for soul, if you're looking for connection, then you need to have a quiet environment, a calm place, where these things can happen, where you can watch them happen, and you can almost orchestrate it, it is a beautiful, wonderful thing. And any photographer is capable of doing this. This is, this is why I, I, I find it very frustrating because I know I used to struggle, you know, with this idea. I can, I can say boo to a goose. You know, there are so many. But I mean, I had to get one of my friends at photo school to go and ask somebody from down the corridor if I could photograph them because I was too scared. It, that, I was that nervous, but I learned that, you know what, once you get used to it, once you get into the, to the groove and, and things, that you end up taking photographs. That if you want your portraits to stand out, if you want them to be the thing that people look at and go, oh my God, your work is so wonderful, that these people look amazing, that's the connection 
that you need to work on. The technical aspects of things are fairly simple. They're not difficult. You know, that picture of Karen, it, it's technically it's, it's not good. I mentioned that. But just connect with people. Be interested in them. And they will, they will talk to you. They will volunteer stuff. Things about themselves. And it's your job to pick up on them. To not scratch away at the surface at some sort of sore until the person starts crying, you know. But to give them a space to express something inside them that is precious and beautiful to them. Because when you capture that, when you capture that moment, then you are making a beautiful portrait of somebody who for that moment you care deeply about. I'm actually getting quite, quite emotional about this when I'm, I'm thinking about it because I, I miss those taking those pictures. I miss doing stuff like that. And that's why I'm starting a second channel shortly about portraiture, about how to not just light things, but those import, this important thing of, of how to take all of the stuff that we learn, the hidden things that books don't talk about and impart them into your portraits. A portrait photographer whom I absolutely adore in a very different kind of way is Mark Selinger. And I've linked to his video over here. Thank you ever so much for watching and I will see you again soon.